perfect. And one more warning. You can't trust Google Images. They have filters that are totally untrustworthy. Well, what does that mean? Well, you might filter for, let's say, okay for commercial use. And the photo really isn't okay for commercial use. And then here comes your lawsuit. So trust me, Google isn't going to defend you in court, all right? Don't trust Google Images. All right, now this episode is about free images, but I will tell you about one paid place I use pretty much every day, and that's clipart.com. They have millions of photos, clip art, and even cartoons, and I don't have to worry about any usage rights. I pay for the right to use those images. And they have lots of sales images too, like arrows and add to cart and guarantees and all that stuff. All right, let's get to the free stuff. Now, what I have to tell you is that just because the images are free, in most cases, that doesn't mean you can do anything you want with them. Each place I talk about today will have some kind of rules you must follow. Now, most of the rules are really easy to comply with, but you should still follow them. For instance, one rule may be that you can't resell the image itself, and that's certainly fair. You got it for free from someone else's creative work, and now you're trying to sell it. Now, this is different from using it on a book cover and selling your book. That's pretty much what is called commercial use. Another rule might be that you can't adapt the photo. Again, that's fair. Now, other photos and images may not have that restriction. One more rule may require you give photo credit and where you must put it. Now, sometimes you might have a credit section in the front matter of a book. Some may require it, it's attached to the edge of the photo. Sometimes you see a little vertical, tiny font photo credit. And some may even request credit, but it's not mandatory. You you get to pick if you want to do it or not. At any rate, you must read the rules for any photo you choose, and the rules may be different for each image on the site you're getting the image from. Don't take chances with this. And no matter how much you love the image, if the rights granted don't match your plans on how you're going to use the image, you are putting yourself at risk of a lawsuit. Now, there are ways to embed where you got the image in the photo. Now, it's too deep to explain here, but any geek worth their salt can do that for you because you'll probably forget (laughs) over time where you got the photo just in case. Okay, so I told you about the paid service I use, clipart.com, but here's one I found recently called pexels.com. You can see some of the images, and they are beautiful images I used from this site on my college ripoff quiz at imtcva.org, that's my school site, slash quiz. So make sure you check that out. They're beautiful. I was able to adapt and put text on them and everything. Okay, so here's a couple. uh, Here's a bunch more places. And remember, you got to read the rules for each image that you would find at one of these places. And this first one actually has audio recordings. So it's uh, uh, wordpress.org slash openverse. This is a new thing that's got all kinds of stuff, creative common stuff. Open verse. Another one that's well known is creativecommons.org. And then Wikipedia has one, commons.wikipedia.org slash wiki slash main underscore page. These are all going to be in your show notes. Another one is stocksnap.io. I'll just read them off for you. Unsplash.com, pixabay.com, freeimages.com freedigitalphotos.net, stockvault.net. And then there's another clip art place that has a lot of transparent PNGs. Transparent means it's nice because the background of your site or wherever you're putting it shows through and then the image 